This video is sponsored by Luminar. Hello everybody, so in today's video I am going to be walking you through how I did this photo shoot using two lens, 24-70 and 72-200. I'm going to be showing you the difference between the two lens. And then in the second part of the video I am going to be showing you how I went from having this image to having this cool image using Luminar Neo. Make sure to stick around because it's a really cool and very quick tutorial and I hope you enjoy it. Before we get into this video, make sure to subscribe to my channel and click the little bell button so not miss any of my future uploads and let's get right into the video. So I'm usually a 24 to 70 shooter but I have the 7200 on me right now so I wanted to play around with it. Beautiful. I'm gonna be way closer now so I'm 35 now. Okay. Beautiful. Uh-huh. Yes, perfect. Love that. <laughs> So I think the biggest difference for me between using the 24 to 70 and the 70 to 200 is definitely the background compression and how my model looks in the lens. I find whenever I use the 70 to 200, I get a bit more of a realistic look of how the model is versus when I want to create more drama, more distortion, I will definitely aim to use the 24 to 70. Especially when I'm using it on 24 to 35, I get quite a lot of elongated limbs and stronger angles and so on. So I definitely recommend you try it however as you can see in some of these examples when you're shooting with a 70 to 200 you can definitely eliminate a lot of noise in the background so for example if you're at a busy beach like we were you can blur the background much easier and just get rid of the unwanted people in the background while if you're shooting on the 24 to 70 it's definitely going to be a bit more difficult and it's going to be harder for you to just separate the background and have the model in the main focus I wouldn't mind like a close-up of just like your butt cheeks basically if that's okay with you. So maybe if you're standing a thing. I think if you're standing, yeah, and it's just gonna be like this with the sun, so just turn a bit more this way. So it's gonna be your butt literally towards me. So turn around. Yeah. Maybe just like um like even out the sand a bit because it's just like super heavy on the bottom. So just try and like spread it basically. <laughs> and just like underneath as well. Yeah. It's like what do you do for a living? I'm just <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's perfect. Oh yeah, I love that. And maybe if you're like pulling up, yeah, pulling up on these, that would be gorgeous. Oh, love. So good. So depending on what I want the scene to be, I will usually either go for the 24 to 70 and work somewhere that is a bit less busy or shoot in the morning when there isn't that many people around. And in this way, I can have way more background in the shot. I can make sure that my model and the nature are in focus all together. And then if I'm shooting in the afternoon, if I'm shooting golden hour, if I want something a bit more dreamy and blurry in the background, I will definitely aim to shoot on the 70 to 200 instead. What if you have even a bit more on, on the other side, like the hair on the other side? Yes, uh-huh. Beautiful. Now to the editing part. I would like to introduce you to Luminar Neo for those of you who are not aware of what the program is. It's a really awesome editing program that is powered by AI and helps you achieve a professional great edit in your images in a very short amount of time. I got to play around with it recently and test out a few of its different features and I really loved it and I wanted to talk to you about it. Okay, so for this part of the video, I want to show you how I edit this particular image on Luminar Neo. And I'm going to start in Photoshop because it does have a Photoshop plugin, which is very helpful. I'm going to go to Filter, Scalum Software, and Luminar Neo. And I'm going to open the um, program. So with this image, as you see, it's definitely underexposed. I think the colors need some work on. It's a raw image, so... It is what it is, it definitely needs some spicing up. So we're going to go to develop and the um, sliders here are pretty simple. You have exposure, 
you have highlights shadows um smart contrast as well which as you guys know i don't really use smart contrast a lot however this one actually looks really nice so i might actually add a tiny bit but first i'm going to work on highlights and shadows as i usually do i might just lower the highlights a little bit and then with the shadows i'm going to definitely bring them up a little bit and by little bit i mean 100 percent and then for the smart contrast i might add a tiny bit more here and straight away you can see a huge difference in the image from just brightening it and then we're going to do um curves color let's go to color um and let's work on temperature i think the temperature is actually pretty good i don't really need to change it that much Saturate, um, saturation and vibrance i'm okay with too we also have the options of sharpness noise reduction which as you guys know i don't really use that much optics we have lens distortion um, the vignette and midpoint lens distortion i don't think there's much yeah we definitely don't want to like distort it too much as you see it can go pretty extreme so we're going to go here and that's it and then when it comes to transform we don't need to do anything here either when it comes to enhance let's go to color and let's go to um hsl here and then we're going to do hue saturation and luminance and i think for hue we're going to start with skin tones as always so i'm going to just play around and see what the skin tones are like as you guys know i usually like for my skin tones to be a bit more orangey or reddish rather than yellow so i don't want to go too far though so maybe around here then because her skin is a bit darker it usually has quite a lot of red tones in it as you see here so i think i'm just going to go for this little slider here and the red just to kind of spice it up a little bit and then for my sky i usually like to make my sky look a certain way so i'm going to work on the blue and so cyan and as you see here you can kind of make it look a bit more greenish blue which i like i don't want to go too much overboard though so i'm gonna go maybe minus nine and then that's it and then we're gonna move on to luminance and then with luminance we can make the skin look brighter or darker which is helpful and maybe the reds as well as you see it kind of gives the skin a bit more depth which i like um so we have this and then for the blue as well for the sky we can either brighten it or darken it I think it kind of looks better over maybe a little bit brighter which is pretty unusual because i usually do like my images darker um however i think for this one in particular it looks pretty well um so we have this with details denoise landscape vignette we don't really need any of that and this is one of the elements of luminar neo that i want to talk about is the sky I think it's a really really cool function that i haven't really had before in other programs as you guys know you can try and add your own background if you want to but it can be very tricky so here it kind of automatically adds the sky onto it to make it a bit more interesting which i like and you can try and click different skies here and as you see it actually looks super realistic the shot was um you know taken straight on towards the model and i think it actually looks really cool so I personally really love it. I think there's so many cool options here and this is a free pack as well, which is pretty awesome. So you don't really have to purchase anything extra. There is more options for extra skies, but in this particular um, situation, I feel like I have plenty of options. I'm kind of aiming towards the first two. I think this one in particular is my favorite. And as you see, there isn't really much to do. You can change the sky orientation as well if you want to. As you see here, you could kind of get like almost reflections in the water, which I think is pretty cool. Um, but I don't really need to do that. I feel like we're good. Although now I'm tempted. No, we're gonna go just the way it was. So we're gonna go back to zero. And then you have uh, mask refinement, scene relighting. So you can see if the scene was relit in like a very strong way as you see here there was quite a lot of blue that could be added and i actually kind of like it in the shot as well and then for reflections we can kind of see here if there's like reflections or not i would probably keep it on the down low i wouldn't really go too high up with this 
and then finally with the sky adjustments you can do like defocus if you want to have it a bit more blurry to make it look a bit more realistic which is nice because sometimes it can look a bit fake and you don't really want that and yeah it looks pretty nice so here it is um i would usually keep the image at that this is the before and after so as you see few clicks and there is quite an extreme difference especially with the sky i have to say i really really do enjoy the sky feature i think it's one of my favorites and i haven't seen it in other programs before so i definitely rec uh, i recommend you guys try it out i don't really work with um face and skin options as much just because i like to have more control with dodge and burn and i'm very specific about how i edit so i usually stay away from that however for me being able to add clouds and cool elements into the sky is definitely a huge huge plus to the program what i love about luminar neo is that it offers you an entire marketplace full of templates and skies that you can purchase as well so if you can't find anything in the options that are free there is plenty to choose from and the options are super affordable as well i should also mention as well that the program itself is really well priced and you can get it as a once-off transaction which is a big plus so you don't have to commit to subscriptions every month and so on which i find really helpful if you like what you see and you would like to try out luminar neo make sure to check out my link below for a discount to sign up okay guys that's it for today thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video and don't forget to check out luminar neo if you did enjoy the workflow and i will see you guys in the next video